Good evening, everybody. Thank y'all for tuning in. You're now tuning into my podcast. Um, SF Johnny, seriously focused Johnny. You are tuned into Difficult People Chronicles. Today's a Q and A. Who is God? I put out something on social media, and someone was questioning God, the Father, the Holy Spirit, the the person question if God is responsible for our blessings if God is responsible for being for us being smart irregardless of how they feel they were being rude I wasn't going back and forth for hours and a whole heap of typing and all that nonsense with this person I was just like I'm not doing that as spiritual beings we cannot entertain distractions I wonder if when God deals with that person, will they find that joke funny? Will their energy be the same? I'm not afraid to be team God. It is to the point I meet men who use God's name to get close to me. Like... Make it seem like we like the same things. But if you listen to them closely, you know that they not for God. Then their conversation switches to saying things like um, they could get any woman in the world or treating you some kind of way. That's not God-like. And I and sometimes I sit back, I'll be like, and that's supposed to make me feel better <laughs> or feel special. In my head, I'm like, I wish that that same person could say the same thing they said around a bunch of grown men. If real mature men heard the lines. But anyway, in the book of Genesis, we get the full picture of how the Almighty created the world and everything in it. All sources come from God. Food, hot water, the bed, the chair, etc. And when I say hot water, God created water, God created man. Man created uh, the tool to create hot water but regardless of what you think everything comes from God Revelations 1 8 I'm the Alpha the Omega says the Lord God who is and who was and who is to come the Almighty God is God he knows your heart Psalms 37 4 take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart Now, I want everybody to be clear. Just because you have a desire in your heart to be with a particular person, God is going to send you his best, not your best. God makes promises and keeps them. In Exodus 3, 16 to 17, Go assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, The God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob appeared to me and said, I have watched over you and have seen what has been done to you in Egypt. And I have promised to bring you up out of your misery in Egypt into the land of the Canaanite, the Hittites, Amorites, Pezzazites, Hevites, Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. He creates prosperous covenants with us. Just like he did with Noah, Abraham, and David. God saw wickedness in the world. And he told Noah to build an ark. Because he was going to destroy the world with the flood. And Noah built the ark. Mm Mm-hmm took his family and everything God told him to take into that ark and he did just that he spared their life Abraham Abraham received a calling from God and God promised Abraham that he would make him 
and his descendants a great nation. Mm Mm-hmm. And that was in Genesis chapter 12. God and King David. God made a covenant with King David. And said that he and his descendants will establish the royal heirs to the throne of the nation of Israel. 2 Samuel chapter 7. God is a teacher. God is a tester. He is the one of the mighty power making change before our eyes that no one can do. Like in Exodus 4, when Moses threw the staff on the ground and it changed into a snake. Mm-hmm. God gives curses for not following his commands. For not exercising his power. God is God. He's the God that when others fail to deliver, he provides all our needs. He's the one to save us, free us, fight for us when we see no way out. When you call on to him, he will remove sickness Restore the dead, destroy demons, witches, cast our enemies into the pit of hell, make our enemies give up information, tell on themselves, make the de- demons submit to you. And he will give you power to destroy those demons and enemies. Like in Luke ten seventeen. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. Okay, so you don't understand that yet? Listen, God can heal you physically, your mind, your relationships. If you feel like your relationship is just going in a different direction, God will. Heal it, bring it back together. God will pull two people apart, shape them, mold them, create a better version of themselves and bring them back together. God heal heart, soul, spirit. He heal the water, the land, the nations. He will destroy evil altars. He will destroy enemies from one generation to the next. Because a hand was lifted against his throne. Exodus seventeen fifteen to 16. Moses built an altar and called it the Lord is my banner. He said because hands were lifted against the throne of the Lord. The Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. Just like fires can destroy Well, God's fire can destroy whomever and whatever goes against him and his children. He can free people from demonic strongholds. Here's something. If he created you in his own image and he is authentic, When God gives blessings, I say this all the time, he gives it to how he created you. In other words, like I always say, I don't think God is going to give you blessings to the phony side of you, the unchanged, the not authentic, the unreal part of you, the phony, phony part of you. Because that wasn't part of his plan. And that is why change is so important. Go back to how God created you. So we are created in the purest, truest form of him. That is why when we get saved or we go work on ourselves, the new us 
becomes unrecognizable. That takes me to this next one. God brings us back to life when we feel dead through change, the developmental process. God represents love. And his power of love manifests through attributes such as peace, knowledge, justice, prosperity. These qualities reflect his divine nature and demonstrate his capacity to bring about positive change in the world. God forgives us of our sins. Do you ever notice? God will tell you the plans of the enemy. But the enemy can't get it straight in telling you God's plans. (laughs) <laughs> in full detail meaning that when the enemy try to lie to you about God's plans you ever notice it's never accurate the enemy tries to mimic God can never get it straight God will restore things back to you even if it means stripping your enemies of what they stole So that means if the enemy stole from you, your clothes, your money, your means to, to, to live, and you go to God in prayer and you pray about restoration, your enemies is going to get stripped naked. They not going to have a pot to piss in because rightfully it ain't theirs. So when people of this world tell you God does not exist, tell me something. Tell me about their end. Because it's going to be worse than their beginning. And when you tell me how a witch and a warlock are living a successful life, Sacrificing, killing, blood sacrifices, excelling by destroying people, kids, and families. Mm-hmm. My question is, are they going to be happy for long? Because it's something that they got to keep on doing and it comes with a cost. And in the end, that cost is greater than what they stole. Karma never comes back the same. And if if they really greedy, Satan is the same. The gratification from what is hidden, lost, and stolen is temporary. And when I say Satan is the same, meaning that Satan will sit there and make a covenant with somebody and give them some things. But he's the same as he was yesterday as today. It's going to come with a cost. And that cost sometimes is greater than what he gave you. It's going to be your life. I could tell you a story about a guy who sacrificed his child. Mm Mm-hmm. For, for for success and his child died in a bad accident and the father was still unsuccessful the crazy part is that I was young then and I had a dream and, I, and and it wasn't until when I heard that his child died, I said, wow. Because that by then I understood what the dream was. He sacrificed his own child for success. And still unsuccessful and broke. Mm-hmm. God is the God of peace. Yahweh Shalom. Whatever promise God makes covenant. 
stand on that. Stand on his word. Because it's not going to change. He's not like Satan who reneges. When people are corrupt and disobedient, they intentionally violate someone's peace. The peace that God creates. And that's why when you go to God and pray about what's hidden, lost, and stolen, God will restore your peace and your enemy will be miserable. Till infinity. Do you know how many times God's children turned away from him? Some do it to this day. It's like wavering. When things is good, they fool God. When things is bad, they act like they don't know him. I heard someone say one day, I don't trust. Another said, I don't believe. But still, God gave him another chance. God will hear their cry, bring them out of their situation. And then they still, when when things just get a little shaky, they just go against God. Because they have no loyalty. Spiritually weak. God... When, when, when you feel like you are not equipped for a position, God will build you, your character, your position, and train you to be a leader and a warrior. In times like these, even today, God will take the smallest And make them the tallest. God is confident. God knows what's best. God will send a messenger to identify a healthy trait or skill set or something that is a hindrance to you. And like Gideon, God will equip people for their role assigned. He knows your strengths and your weaknesses. God will show up in the last hour, second, minute, right when you let go and let let him do his thing. I realize a lot of times I prayed for things and still held on. Once I let go, God took over. And my cousin, rest in peace, said it best. She said, God is waiting for you to surrender. Then he will say, thank you. Now I could do what I do. God will use you to change the hearts of your enemies. Because when they see you, they will say, Dad, that's you. Why? Because they did so much. And you still shining. Still got that glow. And unrecognizable. Because I went on with my life and did not dwell on things, but told my testimony. God dealt with them liars. God should be your best friend. Because he will take care of you like no other. And here's something. If you find a spouse on the same page. That is into God. Just like you went to God. And you go to God. And you say God is this person for me. And God gives you the green light. Honor that blessing. Because a lot of people out here nowadays. They phony. They fake. And God will tell you who's who. I always say that. God is God. He knows it all. He sees it all. Before you even see it, he will tell you years in advance 
how my TV just turned on like that? He will tell you years in advance about what the enemy is up to. So when somebody comes to me and want to talk about who God is and makes jokes, I don't argue with everybody. I step aside. Because when that lightning come down or, or pole drop or tree drop or something, it don't need to harm the both of us. <laughs> they going to know who God is when he get finished with them. I'm going to leave you with this. Now that I said that, I remember a guy one time. Let's say we spoke in March. We spoke in March. It was it was a few years back. We spoke in March and he said that he went up to the pastor in his church and he was talking to having a regular heart to heart conversation with him and man to man about God. He was questioning a lot of things and he was saying things like he don't agree with the decisions that God made about <laughs> what he was talking about blessings and covenants and things like that. He didn't agree with a lot of things. And he said, basically, when it comes to something like when it comes to his kids, you think I'm going to follow orders about uh going here if it's going to jeopardize my family and all this stuff so I'm listening to him and I'm walking back and forth I remember me standing by the window and then I turned because I was trying to fix the TV on a specific channel and he kept talking 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 and something in me just said get off that phone child because when God come for him you don't want to be nowhere near you know even if lightning struck, you, yeah. Even though you're on the other side of the uh, town in another state or whatever, yeah, you don't want no part. So I just was like, I have to go. And I got off the phone. That was like, say, March. I would say by July, August, he called me, told me he was in two accidents. The first one was um, a minor accident. He was able to go to work. But that second accident, he was on bed rest. Yep. And I just was like, I got to (laughs) go. Yeah, I was like, let me get off the phone. Because he was still talking reckless. I wasn't about to argue with him. I said, some people got to learn their lessons on their own. I got off that phone. I jumped on the phone, called my mother. She and I was talking, and I was just like, I don't think he learned his lesson. Yeah. Know who God is. If you don't know who God is, read the Bible. Know who God is. He's very powerful. And I'm going to leave you with that. So, that's it for today. Have a blessed one. Love me more, and I love you more. Know who God is, honor him, worship him, give him thanksgiving, and stay blessed. Later.